new SQD parts for the flame trench identified at Massey's, with new upright parts delivered to Sanchez. Both ships 37 and 38 return to the build site, and SpaceX releases footage of ship 37 static fire at the launch site. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's action-packed RGV Aerial Photography Starbase Flyover Update Episode 92. I'm Jeff A, and I'm looking forward to share some of the amazing things happening at SpaceX's development facility, Starbase Texas, aka the Gateway to Mars. This flight took place on July 30th at an altitude of 6,000 feet and captured all the fast-moving action. So buckle up, keep your seats in an upright position, and let's get started. We'll start over at the Massey's test facility. Here's a labelled map from Procky to find your way around the site. Before we cover the changes to Massey's, let's cover the events of the site for the past week. Ship 38 conducted three cryo tests on July 30th after being transported to the site. It has since been transported back to the build site and now resides in Mega Bay 2, but more on that later. The LOX tank and several pieces of ground support equipment are still quite frosty from this latest test. Now beginning at the old methane tank farm area, we can see the forms are being stripped from the newly constructed electrical bunker. Next to the flame trench, the thrust puck from Ship 36 can be seen as well as two sea level centre engines, one with a serial number 517. The two mystery frames spotted at Sanchez over the past weeks have been staged nearby and have now been identified as the horizontal floors for the new ship quick disconnect gantry. We'll talk more about this over at the Sanchez site. Moving to the commodities trench, we can see the walls are being formed as well as the floor of the trench continuing to be poured. Previously installed electrical conduits are being rerouted to the new bunker, as well as some newer ones. This trench is being extended towards the LOX tank farm area so that the LOX lines can go underground in the trench. The original culvert is also being removed. Alongside the large horizontal methane tank, we can see the subcoolers have been installed in their stands, and next to this they are continuing to build up the frames for the pumps. At the cryotest area, the new stand for proof testing the booster has been moved to its mounting points in front of the quick disconnect structure, which has received new support since the last flyover. Finally, we can see five engines have been removed from Booster 13's aft section. That's all for Massey's this week, let's move to Sanchez. Let's have a quick look at the site map to get your bearings. Feel free to hit pause if you require extended viewing time. Let's start with the steel frames from Massey's static fire stand gantry. These have two legs each, with one of them being longer to sit in the lower level of concrete adjacent to the trench. If we cross back to Massey's, the area of concrete in question can be seen here. Moving to the version 3 booster transport stand, pieces of steel that connect the actuators to the hold down arms are being installed. They are taking their time with this stand because it won't be needed until the booster 18 static fire campaign begins. The black mystery hardware sees a second frame welder together. While these pieces appear to be related, how they will be integrated is unknown. Just across the path, four new pistons are seen by two of the chopstick stabiliser parts. Interestingly, these have fort connections on both ends, leading to the possibility these are related to the just mentioned frames. Nearby, steel plates are being fabricated with thick square tubes. These closely resemble the embeds already seen in the Pad 2 lift area. We'll keep an eye out on these if they are for the booster transport stand there. At the black and white structures, Parts are arriving from more of these mystery workstations. This week, we see some variations. Firstly, this one is smaller than the other ones and could be a top section as it lacks framing for a higher platform. Also, this is a new type of barrel section that features support arms, which we have not seen before. The other sections already have some electricals being installed, with what looks to be a console panel. This might be a sign of the edges of the work platforms and other parts being electrically or hydraulically actuated. Finally at the ship QD arm area, not much progress is seen on the arm itself. The upper chopstick stabiliser arms are seeing some work this week. While the modification is not yet clear, a bracket has been removed that connects one of the hydraulic rams to the chopsticks allowing the arm to swing to and away from the vehicle. We'll see how they look when installed in the Pad 2 chopsticks. Just before moving to the build site, We'd like to thank all of our YouTube and Patreon members. Remember, all of the Patreons get to participate in our Discord show and tell sessions on the same day of each flight. Here you can join in the discussions and ask your own questions. YouTube members also get to watch and listen in with a live chat function. 
Starting at Gigabay construction, excavation of the foundation piles has progressed with a large portion of the Star Factory site complete, with pile cropping started in the corner. Both drill rigs were active during the flyover. Two days remained for this process as both rigs were disassembled on August 2nd and 3rd for departure. The door to Megabay 1 was wide open again this week, giving us a clear view of Booster 16 being prepared for Flight 10, including installation of its hot staging ring on July 31st. In this angled view, the back left corner stand is receiving modifications for version 3 boosters. The China elevator is seen relocated and held by independent supports to the wall. The old supports can be seen sitting on the work stand lift. Previously, both elevator towers were held by a dual support. Just above, a counterbalance beam is hung from the bridge crane as old work platforms are being removed from the bay. Now to the side of Megabay 2, new steel parts are staged with a frame being worked on. These may be platforms for Megabay 1. However, some parts might indicate these are the disassembled pieces of platforms already removed from the bay. Megabay 2 was empty during the flyover, however Ship 38 would return from Massey's on August 1st. It was placed in the centre workstation with its heat tiles facing the wall, allowing the PES loader box to make an appearance for possible fit tests behind closed doors on the second. Once the loader box was removed, Ship 38 was moved to the back left workstation for engine and tile installation. Following Ship 37's return to Megabay 2 on the 3rd, the success of the static fire was put into question when in the early hours of the 5th, an RVAC swap was spotted by Lab Padre's Rover 1 camera. At the same time, the static fire adapter for the launch mount was also spotted heading back to the launch site. It seems testing isn't over for the Flight 10 ship. Moving to the village, the apartment building now has all wall sections being installed on its foundations. An additional precast wall section is seen on a trailer awaiting installation. At the end of the village, LBJ Boulevard is nearing completion with curbs being poured. With that, let's move over to the launch site for some fiery updates. With last week's static fire activity, let's begin at Pad 1, where Ship 37 is sitting atop the modified OLM for testing. The first attempt at a single engine static fire was underway while we were in the air, as you can see from the frost lines on both the locks and methane tanks. This test would ultimately be abandoned though. The next day, a single engine static fire would be successful. SpaceX shared this post including video from within the ship's aft section. With the success of the single engine test, August 1st would see a full duration six engine static fire. Once again, many drone videos were shared on X as well as a slow motion video looking at the Raptors from below. As mentioned earlier, Ship 37 made its way back to Megabay 2 and the OLM began to have its static fire hardware removed with the SQR adapter transported back to Sanchez. The adapter stand would then do a 180 and return to the launch site on the 5th and then lifted back onto the OLM the same day. At the time of writing, no closures have been posted and Ship 37 was still in Megabay 2. Staying at Pad 1, some interesting observations are seen in the tank farm, with only two of the six LOX hippos being subcooled. On the methane side, only a single hippo is seen frosted. This side of the launch site is unable to isolate the subcoolers, so propellant was flowing through all the booster hippos, though only a few of them were being subcooled with liquid nitrogen. Seen in recent weeks, new cable trays have been installed in front of the liquid nitrogen tanks. The first runs of cable have also been installed. The Pad 2 pump farm is quiet this week. The OLM work platform is stored here during testing. The last pump sump sleeve for the methane side is also staged here with some bunker cladding. Across the D2 entrance, additional groundwork has been done to the area. Structural steel deliveries recently arrived and in this ex post from Starship Gazer, labels on the columns being installed call the structure a mega bunker. At the water farm, additional blast wall foundations have been poured. More pipework has been put in place for the FireX and DSS water systems. The vehicle lift station rebar looks complete this week. Once the speculated embeds are installed from Sanchez, this pad can be finished with a concrete pour. Just to the right, five of the water pipes are now connected, with one remaining. Groundwork around pad 2 appears to be the most visible change this week. The west end of the flame trench is now being prepared for concrete. Trench covers have been installed on the commodities along the flame trench. 
The flame trench wall along the ground support equipment bunker has also been completed with the three remaining panels installed. Finally, taking a look at the Pad 2 launch mount, little was seen from above, however following the static fire testing, the front hood for the LOX BQD was lifted in place. Well, that's it for episode 92 of Starbase Flyover Update. Thank you for choosing to fly with RGV Aerial Photography and we hope you all enjoyed the flight. If you liked what you saw today, please subscribe for more episodes and content so you don't miss out on the new videos each week. I'm Jeff Fay, and we hope to see you again from 6,000 feet.